Hey guys, it's Sean with 2Fab here with Ty Runyon, Alex Villajos, and uh, Evan Williams from Versailles. Hi. 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 Excited to see you guys here. We're going to be talking about the uh, third season, the third and final season of the show, which is airing uh, this weekend, Saturday, uh, October 6th. On Ovation TV. On Ovation TV, that's yeah. right. What was it like going back, you know, for the third season, knowing that this was, you guys knew that it was going to be the last season going into uh, <laughs> no. shooting yeah, no. it? Oh, yeah. Okay. We yeah. found out six weeks before the end of filming, actually. Yeah. So oh, wow. we were sort of mid, we were about to get the last couple of scripts for the last block, and then yeah. they were like, you know, coming back. And that was sort of like a bit of an adjustment period while we were filming going, okay, we have to sort of say goodbye. Right. And I'm glad that they did it, right? Because also we would hate to get to the end of the season and then sort of wait sure. for the call. Wait, wait for and, the then call and then it never came, <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, they were respectful, but it was a hot topic going over. We knew that our contracts were up. Oh, yes, yeah. So we, you know, nothing had been decided yet, but yeah. they did wait until September. September, yeah. It was a surprise, but it wasn't a great shock. Yeah. Yeah. And it's cool right. to be finishing on a high note. We think that, like, that's what's really cool about doing a European show, is that right. it's kind of normal to do three seasons. And so uh, the show wasn't canceled. It wasn't because no. of the show. Like, the show's on in 191 countries now. Yeah. So it's a hit. People love it. People from all over the world are telling us how much they love it. Right. And so uh, we, ha we have this final gift to give to America, and we hope that they like it. Was it emotional, like filming your final scenes? I mean, thankfully you didn't get to know that it was going to be, you know, sort yeah. of the end. But absolutely, man. I, I mean, my final scene was with um, an actress called Jessica Clark, who plays my wife, Princess Palatine, in the show. It was also her last scene as well. You had a couple more scenes to do, like the mm -hmm. following day. So yeah. there was a lot of people around, like that, were, that came to sort of watch the farewell. I was there for George Blagden, who plays Louis' last scene as well. So it is emotional because. You don't you hear, the, you hear the cut, that's a really good cut, which means you're not going again cut, and you sort of go, okay, I think that's it now, you know? And, and my last scene was with my horse. <laughs> oh, yeah, we should have a big very, <laughs> That was very emotional. <laughs> Me and Minos. The horse cried. And, yeah, he did, he did. He laid his head on my chest, and I was, you know, trying to laugh it off, and there's a photo on my Instagram as proof of the sappy moment that it was, but it was like... Yeah, because it yeah. uh, it's not only we're saying goodbye to the, the show, but we're saying goodbye to, you know, uh, we we've, we've known each other for four years. We've lived and breathed and lived in Paris for six months of the year. We became a family off screen. Like these two were like my brothers, you know. So it's also sad to say goodbye. <laughs> clearly not. Clearly not. Uh, yeah. sad, sad, sad to say goodbye to not only the show and the characters, but also the people that we work with. One thing I was curious about, you know, talking about Monchevi's relationship mm -hmm. a little bit. The idea, because I've read some like past interviews where you guys talk about, you know, the fact that um, particularly for um, the Chevalier's character, uh, you know, he comes from a world where uh, he has to be a little bit more careful about the fact, um, you know, that he has same sex attractions, everything like because of the time that uh, this is all taking place in. And it kind of reminded me a little bit about, you know, we talk a lot today about like privilege and the idea that privilege can kind of insulate you from yeah. um, real like adversity, uh, real challenges. And in a way, you know, do you kind of feel that uh, the way that, you know, this storyline is able to play out is because of the fact that it's the king's brother? Absolutely. You know? I think that, sure. is the, that is a really great question and also an amazing starting point to why we kept with him. Because obviously at a time, they, at the, this time in, in court and this time in history, in French history, if you were gay or homosexual, you would be lynched, you know, hung on and quartered. It's punishable by death. The way, the reason why they get to be so lavish, so extravagant, and so pushing the rules and breaking the rules, really, pretty much every episode, is because he's the king's brother, and by proxy, he cannot get hurt by that. And when he gets hurt in certain very cases, he gets put in jail. But you know, Louis knows that he can't kill the chevalier because he would break his brother's heart. So it's that thing, right? The flip side of that privilege is that their love relationship has always been lethally unbalanced. Yeah, completely. Like if he snapped his fingers. I would either get expelled or lose my head. Yeah. And the Chevalier always knew that, and so was always trying to grab on and make himself relevant. And in season three, we see what happens when both characters are forced to stand on their own. And the yeah. Chevalier has always existed in the shadow of Philippe and has been uh, basically manipulating himself and manipulating Philippe to stay there. And so when he's cast out and forced to find his identity and figure out who he is, there's a potential that he's going to change and maybe grow up. So we'll see, maybe the Chevalier might turn into the hero. Do you guys think that the, um, the you know, because I do think that it's, uh, the show shows, um, you know, a gay love story in a different, in a different way than mm. we've seen before. Do you yeah. feel that it sort of like moved the needle, you know, in terms of how television... We hope I so. Hope, yeah, I hope, hope so. so. And I, I, you can also tell because there's parts of the world where the, the relationship is still censored. Like in Russia, we... The, it, it just goes black. to black and we're just really good friends. 
Just so, when it comes back up after, the, after any sort of, you know, fooling around in the, between I, the sheets. I feel like that just means that we are pushing the envelope. And uh, the number of people we've had come to us and say that they feel represented has been mind-blowing. There was an amazing article That's that great. got released about two days ago that was on Pop Sugar about a boy who was a girl who is now going through some, you know, some transgender and saw Philippe on the screen and decided that it was that was that was the representation that they were that they required to become brave and accept who they were. Stuff like that just makes me fall into like break into tears. Like that's, awesome. that's why we do it, you know? Yeah. That's why we do it. So yeah, so it's the best case scenario. And also in the show we never say the word gay or homosexual. So I think that's pushing the needle in terms of, you know, it is a gay relationship, mm -hmm. but we but we just treat them as people yeah. who are in love. It's not a story about gays, it's a story about love. Yeah. Exactly. And so in that way it's universal.